if you are watching this, you should be in group B for science, which is the group that did not go with Mrs. Yamamoto, or you went and then we discovered you had more work done that didn't get sent right away, and so then I moved you into group B, okay? Now, group B, at this point, you know, a lot of you are in different spots. Like, some of you are basically done, so maybe you're not even really going to need to do this. Some of you are going to maybe be a little bit ahead of this, but not entirely done. Some of you are going to be somewhere in the middle. It's okay. As long as you listen close, I think you're going to be fine. So really the goal today is for you to get your evidence done, whatever that means. Maybe you're, uh, and maybe, I think you could probably use tomorrow too. I think you'll be fine if you spread it between today and tomorrow. Okay. What you're going to need to, th to think about is, let me go back to this page. This is the page I was using for my class. Some of you may have a page that looks more like this. Let me show you. Some of you are going to be using this one that Mrs. Mittag's class was doing. Let me find it. Hold on one second. There we go, this one. Okay, so some of you have this one. And you're going, whatever one you have, your goal is to get the evidence done. So whether you're using this note taker today or whether you are using the one from my class or if you have the one from Tranche, which I think is just, I think she just had you writing straight on the page. Evidence is the goal, no matter what note taker you have, okay? At this point, you should already have body paragraph one done. You should already have headings done because that was a video from a couple of days ago. So if you don't have your headings done, you're going to want to make sure you um, rewatch the video from a couple of days ago, which you can find by looking in your OneNote here, and just going back a couple of pages to find the one that's called heading. Today, you should be working on your, let me pull this over here, your evidence, okay? You needed to have a big idea sentence and three pieces of evidence for each body paragraph. We have asked that most students write two paragraphs, but some of you, we're challenging to do three. If you're challenged to do three, we'll have three on your note taker, and you should have already known that pretty much from the get-go. If you're confused, though, and you're not sure if you're writing three, just ask me, because I will know, okay? so. If you are only working on two paragraphs, then you should only have to do this today, which is the evidence for body paragraph two. However, if you're working on three body paragraphs, then you need to go make sure you have body paragraph two done and body paragraph three. Hopefully everyone watching this video already did body paragraph one. It's completely finished. So we're focusing our energy on body paragraph two and three. Again, if you are not writing a third body paragraph, then disregard that part. Now, what does every paragraph need? Well, every paragraph is going to need to have four total sentences. You need to have a big idea sentence that is basically the topic of the paragraph. That was also a couple days ago. You should already have those done. If you do not, you're gonna to wanna to watch that before you move forward here. Because you'll need a body paragraph, um, you'll need a big idea sentence for each body paragraph. So if you're doing two body paragraphs, you'll need a big idea sentence for fir the first one and the second. If you're doing three, you'll need a big idea sentence for the first one, the second one, and the third one. That is, like I said, it doesn't tell you too much. It's very much like a topic sentence. It gives an overview of the main idea of that specific paragraph. It looks like if you were in Ms. Mitzak's class, she already sort of did that for you. So. That's cool. You might not even need those. The, it looked like they were on that like left side of the note taker that you guys had. Now, after you've got your big idea sentences right, you're gonna need to have your evidence. Evidence is your information that comes from the text that supports your ideas, that proves your point. And in this whole essay, our point is really telling people about the history of spice, right? Each individual paragraph breaks that down further. So we've got the history of spice as a whole. 
Then we narrow down each paragraph. Ah, body paragraph one, we're just focusing on the uses of spice, how were spices used, that's it. Okay, our big idea should tell us that that's the focus in that paragraph. And then our evidence should support that big idea. Oh, here's some evidence from my texts that say how spices were used. Now, some students I noticed were like, oh, I use, you know, I use cat drip on burgers. And I'm like, that's, okay, first, first, that's not a spice. There's spices in ketchup, yes. It's not a spice, it's condiment difference. Second, that's not from our source. So even if you are a spice expert at your house, I'd like to think I'm a little bit of a spice expert. You're not using your personal stories, unfortunately. That'd be pretty cool. But it's an informational paragraph, so we need to go back to the source. In this case, you've got two. Let me show them to you. Okay, hold on. I've got like three windows open here. Ah, here's our first source. So you should have highlighted all this fun stuff. Ideally, most of you should have already actually pulled all your evidence into these note takers. I know the different teachers handled it differently, though. I don't think Mrs. Mittag had you use these. Miss Tranch and I did, though. So ideally, you know, you've already got, oh, I've got my trade business facts pulled from my saw already. I've got my trade business facts pulled from Life of Spice already. If you didn't use this graphic organizer to pull in your ideas you highlighted, then just go back to that original text and look at what you highlighted. And you're gonna find, because today we're focusing on trade and business for our body paragraph two, and power if we're writing a third. Again, you should have already done uses. If you didn't, then you can follow this process and go back and figure out that. So in total, I said our body paragraph needs four sentences, right? The first is the big idea sentence. We're not going to the text for that. We're just making a general statement about what we're going to write about. These, it says provide evidence about the topic from your sources, plural. That means multiple sources. Make sure you use evidence from all your sources. So how many sources do we have? Two. We have the Y salt source and we have the life spice. So we need three evidence sentences using two sources. Could we do four? Oh yeah. If you want to pull two and two, cool. Remember, we're only focusing on our second body paragraph right now. The reason I'm pointing up here is because this is where I break all of it down. This is just like, it's the same as above. It's the same as above, just a different focus. So, okay, I'm gonna go to Life Spice, and you know, like, I mean, excuse me, I'm gonna go to Y Salt. I'm gonna pick one piece of evidence about trade and business from that source. Why only one? Because, honestly, Life Spice is a way better article. I mean, look how short this thing is. Whoops, look at this. There's not that much in there. I only really see, I mean, I see a couple trade business facts that are fine. Also, I remember that the Life of Spice talks about Rome being a trading center in a better way. So I don't even want to use that fact, probably. This might be good, because I don't think this fact is anywhere in the life of spice. So you want to make sure whatever evidence you pull isn't too similar either. It needs to be different, needs to be varied. Because otherwise your reader's gonna be like, wow, this is really repetitive. So you want to keep it interesting. So pick a piece of evidence from this about trade and business that's a diff very different from what you're gonna do over from your other source. Right? Keep it interesting. You pick one piece from this, and then you're gonna pick Again, one piece from this. This should already be all highlighted and everything, okay? Like this one is, hopefully. Again, if you don't even need to go back to your source and you already have it in here, then even better. And you're gonna find, I would say pick two from Life of Spice, because again, that's a way longer article. You have more information. You're gonna pick two you, uh, trade business facts from that and one trade business facts from the Y salt. If you pick, them differently, that's not a big deal, but you definitely need to pull from both sources. As you take that evidence, 
you're going to write it into whatever the note taker is that you're using. If you're using this one, great, you're going to put your three pieces of evidence there. And remember, we're focusing on putting it into our words. When you copy from the text directly, it needs to be cited, which means you need to have quotation marks around the exact words, but we're not doing that this year. We're focusing on what's called paraphrasing, which means you're looking at something somebody else wrote and then you're putting it into the way you would say it, your words, your language. There are a couple ways you could do that. One, um, my favorite trick is to read a piece of evidence directly from a source, close my eyes, and try to say it in my way because you're, most people can't memorize after reading once. So you read it, you close your eyes, and then you try to say it your way. And almost always it will look very, a little bit different. So then you capture what you said. Oh, I'm going to write that down before I forget. Or if you're not, um, your memory isn't great and you don't think you could do that, what you could try to do is just look at a piece of evidence. Maybe you pick this one. And you could just say, you know, instead of saying cities were founded um, or trade routes were established, I could look up synonyms for those words on thesaurus.com or if I have a thesaurus at my house, I could find words that mean the same. Or I could switch words around and turn them into mine or I could get rid of some words. There are a lot of ways to change the words around. Really, I like to think about it as how would I say it if I was explaining it to somebody without reading it directly. Now, um, you have to also remember that you need transition words before you choose that evidence. So maybe I chose this, and I, I'm going to say, mm, let me look at what evidence uh, sentence starters I can use. If you're not sure where this page is, it's in your helpful literacy posters and it's called informational paragraph sentence starters. I'm on my second body paragraph, so I'm gonna to go to this box and I'm going to find my text evidence sentence starters. I like a simple, the text says, or the text states a lot. I also like the one where you have to put the title of the text in the parentheses, I mean, in the quotation marks, excuse me. Um, I mean, I, all of these are good and it's nice to, ch to choose different ones so you're not repeating yourself too much. If all three pieces of your evidence say, the text says, the text says, the text says, it's like, okay, vary it up. Because writing can stay engaging by changing, by taking your reader on an adventure. So you need to first make sure I, I've got my sentence starters, and really, if you want to, you could do that first. Like you could put those, put those in. Uh, let me find that. Sorry, I have way too many different things for different people in here. Do, do, do. Aha, here we are. So like you, if you wanted to, you should already have your big idea sentence here. So I'm going to pretend that's where that is. And if you wanted to, you could say the text says, my evidence is blah, 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 blah. Maybe you want to choose one where you actually say the name of the source. Um, the life of Spice states. Notice the name of the article is inside of the quotation marks there, if I did that one. If I used uh, an evidence from life or why salt, then the name would be why salt. I might put those there just to not forget before I choose my evidence, perhaps, because it's easy to forget, right? Maybe I'll do it here too, just to be safe. I hopefully have my big idea sentence already. That's where that would go. And then I actually want to change them and make them different if I can from up there. So maybe I'll say, ah, we have window ads boxes. Stop it. Stop that one note. Oh, whatever, it doesn't want, it doesn't like me today. So maybe I'll go, mm, the sword says. I'm gonna push enter. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. One note formatting is annoying. I know you, I'm sure you know. The source says, um, ooh, I'll use Y salt. Y salt said, and another 
act is. Look, I did different sentence starters on each one. That's a lot more interesting than saying the text says, 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 right? So vary it, okay? Because we don't want to use lazy writing. We want to use interesting writing. And lazy writing is when, it, when you do start repeating yourself because you're like, I don't know what else to do. Use that, use this, right? That'll help. And do it at the beginning, like I said. And then go to the text, find your facts. Remember though, your facts that you put in here, you need to have at least one from Life of Spice and at least one from Y Salt. And then whatever the third fact is, you pick which one it came from. My recommendation is, again, to mostly use this article for two of the facts out of the three for each body paragraph. Um, now, oh, sorry, I have like so many windows. There we are. Then, you need to make sure, okay, do I have all of that done? Did I put it in my own words? Did I get body paragraph two and three done? Again, maybe some of you aren't doing three. That's okay. Then, then ignore that. Just do two. Body paragraph three, you're following the same thing that I just went through, but now your focus is on power facts. So each body paragraph has a different focus. This is the uses focus. This is the big business focus. This is the um, power focus. Okay, each of the body paragraphs has four sentences total. If you're done, then yay, you're done. That's your goal though. Like today and probably tomorrow, I think you'll still have time. All three body paragraphs should be done or all two if you're only doing two. Do not worry about your conclusion at this point. That's going to be your final, final thing. Don't worry about that yet. We will have another day on conclusion. Just worry about getting your evidence done. And if you don't have a big idea, reason, go back to that last video and watch that. Make sure you have that as well. Okay. Remember, both sources, your words. Actually, I'm going to leave you with three, three things to remember. Both sources, sentence starters, your words. Both sources, sentence starters, and your words. If you remember those things, you're going to be fine. Okay, good luck.